Beyond the ban, China's chip strategy still redraws global tech power. No gunfire, no warships, no satellites shot down. Yet in the heart of a technological revolution, reshaping the world by the millisecond, a silent race has begun. On tiny wafers, smaller than the palm of your hand, where the number of transistors determines who leads the future. For years, the chip industry was believed to be the domain of just three giants, TSMC, Samsung, and ASML. Untouchable peaks that no one could scale without Western technology. But then, something unthinkable happened. Without an EUV lithography machine, the golden key to modern chips, a Chinese company quietly produced a seven nanometer chip. Not a prototype, not a lab experiment, but a commercial processor now powering premium smartphones sold in the heart of Shanghai. That company is SMIC, and this is no longer just a semiconductor factory. It's a critical strategic piece in China's plan to rebuild its high-tech industry, a piece the entire world is watching closely. In this video, Top 10 Discoveries official will dive deep into this high-stakes game, where technology, capital, and ambition collide. What is SMIC doing? How much is China investing? And what does this mean for American companies, the leaders of the semiconductor revolution for over half a century? No EUV machines, no access to cutting edge chip manufacturing technology, no global network of experts. And yet, SMIC, despite numerous limitations, managed to produce a seven nanometer chip, something the industry once deemed impossible without Europe's extreme ultraviolet lithography equipment. How could a company without the technologies considered the only gateway to the future overcome seemingly insurmountable technical barriers? The answer lies in three factors. Ingenious engineering, long-term investment strategy, and a rapidly growing domestic network. While TSMC and Samsung have moved to three nanometer and five nanometer processes with advanced EUV systems, SMIC relied on older DUV machines to produce seven nanometer chips using multi-patterning techniques. It's like trying to create a hyper-realistic painting with a pencil instead of a laser printer. It requires not just technology, but extraordinary precision at every step of the lithography process. In 2023, SMIC produced the Kirin 9000S chip for Huawei using a seven nanometer process, sending shock waves through the industry. Though initial production was limited at just 30,000 wafers per month, it marked a turning point. By late 2024, SMIC aimed to expand capacity to 50,000 wafers per month, a significant leap from its starting point. While SMIC's yield rate is around 40%, lower than the 60 to 70% of its competitors, the mere fact that it can produce commercial seven nanometer chips without EUV is a clear testament to its technical resilience Instead of diving headfirst into the high-tech race with its strict barriers, SMIC chose a detour, optimizing DUV technology, leveraging internal capabilities, and scaling production layer by layer. As of 2024, SMIC operates over 30 RFI DUV lithography machines and continuously refines its processes to improve yields. Producing seven nanometer chips, though not yet matching the scale or efficiency of global leaders, is a remarkable step, especially when SMIC's capital expenditure in 2023 reached $7.47 billion, a 17% increase from the previous year. SMIC isn't going it alone. In recent years, close collaboration between East Meech and chip design firms like Huawei High Silicon has created a complete semiconductor value chain. Alongside this, the rise of domestic companies supplying equipment design software EDA, and materials is reducing SMIC's reliance on external supply chains. With a national semiconductor investment fund reaching $48 billion by late 2024, numerous startups in equipment, semiconductor chemicals, and process automation are receiving funding to build capabilities. The result? SMIC is no longer a lone company chasing the pack. It's becoming the hub of an increasingly robust domestic ecosystem. In a world where a single nanometer represents a technological chasm, no one can predict the future. SMIC can't yet match TSMC's scale or Samsung's production efficiency. But what SMIC has achieved is the ability to break through barriers once thought impossible through internal strength, optimization, and a disciplined investment plan. 
To consumers, this might just mean a smaller, faster chip. But to the global semiconductor industry, it signals the rise of a new force, one that doesn't follow the old playbook. And the big question is, how will American companies, leaders of this game for decades, respond to this quiet but undeniable shift? Three years ago, SMIC was seen as a promising but limited semiconductor manufacturer, constrained by technology, equipment, and global reach. By mid-2025, the picture has changed. Now, SEMIC isn't just surviving under pressure, it's expanding at an unprecedented pace, redefining its role in the global technology supply chain. Reports from Source Engine indicate SMIC is approaching 900,000 wafers per month, eight inch equivalent, by late 2025, doubling its capacity from 2019. It's not just Beijing or Shanghai. SMIC has a presence in Tianjin, Shenzhen, Wuhan, and is expanding through a local joint venture model where city governments contribute capital or infrastructure in exchange for stable production and local hiring. The SMIC Jingcheng project in Beijing, though delayed by equipment import challenges, is moving forward. Phase one, with a capacity of 100,000 wafers per month, is nearing trial production. Phase two, which began in early 2025, has a minimum investment of 50 billion CNY, approximately 6.86 billion US dollars per digit times. These aren't isolated factories. They're part of a network strategy with SMIC building widespread production infrastructure to diversify risk and optimize supply chains. In an industry requiring tens of billions in upfront investment, SMIC can't go far on revenue alone. It needs capital, large, stable, and long-term. While there's no evidence SMIC directly received the $48 billion from China's National Integrated Circuit Fund, Big Fund, in 2023, the fund's third phase launched in 2024 with $47.5 billion, is channeling resources into the ecosystem SMIC anchors through investments in equipment, semiconductor startups, or technical support. Per Tom's Hardware, SMIC's 2023 capital expenditure hits $7.47 billion, up over 17% from the prior year. In 2025, the company continues heavy investment, focusing on mid-sized factories, 40,000 to 60,000 WPM, rather than a single mega factory. SMIC is also aggressively hiring with university partnerships, scholarship programs, and collaborations with research institutes, building a domestic engineering workforce to replace the international talent restricted since 2020. Beyond the numbers, SMIC is transforming its very nature. From a secondary foundry, it's becoming a cornerstone supplier for China's tech supply chain, especially for mature processes, 28, 22 nanometers, widely used in automotive, industrial, and consumer electronics. According to Trendforce, China, largely thanks to SMEC, will hold over 25% of the global market share in mature semiconductor processes by late 2025. This allows SMEC to avoid the three nanometer race while remaining a domestic production pillar with global relevance. In the first quarter of 2025, SMEC reported $2.247 billion in revenue, up 1.8% from the prior quarter. Factory utilization reached 89.6%, signaling strong demand and stabilizing production despite technical and supply chain challenges. More importantly, domestic partners, from Huawei to chip design startups, are increasingly choosing SMIC, not just out of necessity, but as a strategic preference. This shift carries profound implications. To a global audience, especially in the US, SMIC may still be overshadowed by TSMC or Samsung. But when you look at its growth rate, investment resilience, and central role in a rising domestic supply chain, SMIC is doing what few in the industry have, thriving under constraints. They may not yet produce three nanometer chips, lack extreme ultraviolet, or achieve 90% yields, but they've built a self-reliant system capable of serving an economy of nearly 1.5 billion people and are steadily expanding their global influence. In the tech world, there's no lasting calm. When one side builds a wall, the other finds a new door. And in semiconductors, where each nanometer can define an entire generation of products, proactivity is becoming a survival strategy. 
When some key international suppliers restricted access to advanced technologies, particularly EUV lithography systems and chip design software, EDA, China didn't respond by waiting. It acted. The result? A wave of domestic companies began investing in core semiconductor supply chain components, from next-generation DUV lithography machines, plasma etching systems, to highly sensitive chemicals like photoresist. Per Nikkei Asia, over 20 domestic firms have received funding to accelerate progress in chip manufacturing equipment. Some have even started testing localized scanners, though still at 90 nanometers or 65 nanometers. A slow but noteworthy start. From a geopolitical perspective, this signals a fundamental shift. Instead of relying on temporary gaps in global supply chains, China is choosing to rebuild its ecosystem from the ground up. Despite the immense time and resources required, while outside analysts often focus on policy, a less discussed but deeply impactful factor is the response from China's domestic tech companies. Facing supply chain disruption risks, some firms began reallocating chip production orders, gradually shifting from foreign manufacturers to SMIC, not out of obligation, but as a strategic precaution. This is a market-driven move where companies are voluntarily diversifying risk. They recognize that as technology becomes central to competitiveness, having a domestic supplier, even an imperfect one, is better than betting everything on a link beyond their control. Concurrently, China has introduced new regulations on chip traceability, a technical measure to enhance supply chain transparency, but also a pathway to prioritize domestic firms in tenders, support, and product development. The key point isn't whether SMEC can catch TSMC, but whether China can build a parallel semiconductor ecosystem robust enough to operate independently of the traditional Western supply chain. And if you look at the pace of development in domestic EDA firms like Empyrean, wafer and pure silicon material producers and AI supported chip design centers, SMIC is just the tip of a much larger iceberg. Per IC Insights, China's goal by 2030 is 50% semiconductor self-sufficiency, meaning half its domestic demand is met by local capabilities, from design to manufacturing to packaging. No need to dominate the global market, just self-reliance at this scale is a game changer in the global tech balance. As an analyst tracking this industry for years, I see what's unfolding not as catching up to surpass, but as building to endure. S-Mic may not produce three nanometer chips in the next few years, but if their broader ecosystem of hundreds of equipment, material, and software companies continues to grow and strengthen, China won't need to overtake TSMC. They'll just need to not need TSMC. And for an economy of 1.5 billion people, that's a quiet revolution. Since 2020, the U.S.'s high-tech export control strategy has ushered in a new phase of global tech competition. But looking at what's happened in semiconductors, especially with SMIC, it's time to ask a bigger question. Are these barriers slowing down the competition or are they inadvertently accelerating their self-reliance? In theory, bans on equipment and advanced technologies like EUV have significantly slowed SMIC's ability to produce chips below seven nanometers. But in reality, SMIC hasn't been frozen. They took a different path, using older DUV technology with complex patterning to produce seven nanometer chips and succeeded commercially with Huawei's Kirin 9000S. The question is, if a company denied access to core technology can still produce seven nanometer chips, what happens if they master the manufacturing equipment too? That's the real strategic risk, when sanctions stop slowing progress and instead drive the development of alternative solutions. U.S. export controls target current strengths, EUV machines, EDA software, advanced components. But China is investing in its strategic weaknesses, areas they can't master today but could in five to 10 years. Specifically, SMIC can't buy EUV machines. China develops domestic 193 nanometer scanner programs, plasma etching, and photoresist. Restricted from Western EDA, domestic startups like Empyrean are funded to replace tools like Synopsys or Cadence. If these investments succeed, SMIC won't just be a foundry, it'll be the heart of a self-sustaining supply chain, even if cut off from international resources. 
In semiconductors, a single delayed component, from photo mass materials to fluoride gas, can halt an entire production line. True power lies not in the factory, but in controlling the entire supply chain. If SMIC and its domestic partners master manufacturing equipment, high purity materials, and local chip design software, being excluded from global supply chains will cease to be a serious threat. From a geostrategic view, this is the shift from vulnerable to self-reliant. So what should the U.S. do? Instead of focusing solely on restricting competitors, the U.S. should invest more in its domestic manufacturing ecosystem, not just chip design like NVIDIA, AMD, but also factories, Intel Foundry, TSMC Arizona, equipment and workforce training. Rather than leaving gaps others can fill, it should strengthen partnerships with Japan, South Korea, the EU, and Taiwan to maintain unified standards, technology, and production capacity. While hardware can be replaced, chip design software, EDA, remains the encryption key to chip logic. This is a near-absolute U.S. advantage, and one competitors will need decades to match. In a world where every nanometer shapes the global tech landscape, sanctions might slow one generation of chips, but an ecosystem, if built deeply and broadly enough, can give rise to an entirely new generation of technology, surpassing limits once thought unbreakable. SMIC isn't alone, and the U.S. isn't short on technological firepower. But what's truly needed now isn't the next sanction, it's the next vision. As China quietly builds its own tech doorway, the U.S. must ask, are we busy building walls while the world finds new paths forward? Sanctions can delay a generation of chips, but a new ecosystem can create a generation of technology. So what's more sustainable for America? The next restriction or investment in the next generation? What do you think? Should tech control policies tighten further or is it time for a strategic pivot? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, share your perspective. And if you love sharp tech analysis and global strategic showdowns, don't forget to subscribe to join Top 10 Discoveries Official on this journey to explore the tech world reshaping global order.